Hello and welcome to Simply Learn. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That's www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Today we're going to cover the basic array in Python and some of the functionality around it. And before we jump in, I'd like to please remind you that you can always post something in the notes here on the YouTube videos. Or you can go to www.simplylearn.com and go under our forums and ask questions there. We have a team that monitors these and they'll be happy to answer those questions. Array in Python. Array is a container that holds multiple values of the same type. And this is very key is that the array has to be of the same type. So the syntax for developing your basic array is going to be your variable, whatever you want to call it, my array or whatever you're working on, equals array, your type code, and then the elements in the array. This is the main type that they have for arrays. Uh, and you'll see a quick list here. Character is basically your character as you know it. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They're represented by a number between uh, one, there's like up to 128 characters. That's how many numbers are in there. So when you have assigned a character, that means that they're now using that instead of as a character notation, it's being used as just an actual value, plus or minus, unsigned character. You don't usually use a lot of these as far as signed and unsigned characters, but it does come up for using them for containing a small amount of space to do something. And then you have your Pi Unicode. The Pi Unicode is your Unicode characters. So if you remember, if you're in the American set of characters, they use only half the memory, but they don't have all the different characters used in different languages. That's why a lot of times you'll see, especially when you go international, you need to be very aware of whether Unicode or just a regular character. Uh, and then there's an into regular integer where they have signed short, so it has a smaller amount of values, unsigned short, your signed integer, plus or minus, again, your unsigned, and then you have your long, your signed long, unsigned long, so if you want to have a long, basically is double that, so each one of these just doubles in size and how much numbers they can hold, until you get all the way to float and double. So again, those are just different numbers and just depends on how many significant digits you want to keep on there. That's a brief on type code. Definitely, we're not going to go into too much detail, any more detail on that, but we do want to jump in and actually do an array and start showing you how the arrays work and what you can do with them. Now, to do this, you're going to use your favorite Python editor, or IDE, your interface. I, myself, go through Anaconda and Jupyter Notebook. Certainly, if you're using any other interface, it'll work just the same. This is very basic code in Python. I use Anaconda because it's a great navigator for following your different modules you install into your Python, and it has different packages, and then Jupyter Notebook sits on there. There's also Spider, which is another Python editor. There's a ton of Python editors out there. But we'll go ahead and launch our Jupyter Notebook. Once I'm in the Jupyter Notebook, it opens up whatever folder it's set to, and I can simply go under New, and I'm going to create a new Python 3, and that will open up my Python 3 Notebook. So now I can start writing code. And we'll start off the bat by importing. So we're going to, um, from array import, we're going to import all the different functionality that the array offers. And then we're going to create our first array. We'll just call it ARR, or we can call it my array or whatever you'd like. And it is simply array. And then we're going to put in the type. And then we'll go ahead and just put in brackets what we want for an array. And we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, real simple array. And then let's go ahead and just print that out and see what that looks like. And we get an array of type integer, one, two, three, four, five. And then let's flip over and just remember what the I is. Lowercase is signed integer and uppercase is assigned. This is a lowercase, so we have a signed integer. This, um, it's actually a short integer when you do the I, and then the H is the unsigned short integer. And to see what that means when we're assigning this, let's go up here and change one of our values to minus one and we have it set to I, and we run it, and it comes out okay. No errors. But what happens when we change this to H, which is the unsigned short inter integer? When we run this, we're going to get an error. Why? Because we gave it a minus value, and if you remember correctly from the H, H is an unsigned short integer, so there should be no negative values in there. Then we'll go ahead and go back and just switch this to I, and run it. And then there's so many things we can do with this. But let's start by looking at what's going on in the computer. Array buffer underscore info. There we go. And when you do an array buffer info, we're just going to print this out. And we run this. This is going to show us the size of what's going on with our buffer in here. This is our actual operating system address. And then the size is here. It's got a size of 5. So you can actually go in there and you can hard locate this on your computer. 
Usually we very rarely use something like that, but it's kind of interesting that we can look that up so easily. And when we're manipulating the array, we can simply do print. Here's our array. We'll put our brackets in here, and if we print 2, let me go ahead and run this. And you look at this, we got minus 1, 2, 3, and it printed 3. And the reason it does that is we always count from 0. So in programming language, you always start 0, 1, 2. And the 2 is going to be the section where it says 3 on there. And if we can print just one object in there, this next one is so basic. The for statement, for i in array, this is a simple iteration. So what this means is we're going to take each value in the array and we're going to do something with it. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and just print it out. So if we want to print out all of the variables, you can go for i in array, print i. I want you to notice the difference here is instead of it printing out that this is an array with the values in it, it comes down and just prints each individual value in here. Now this does all of them, but let's say you uh, are looking at this, you say, hey, I don't want to um, do all of them. We're going to do for, uh, we'll do pointer instead of i, for pointer in range 5. And instead we're going to print, and here's our array r, and we're going to look up the index pointer. So this is going to print out, let's just see what this looks like. Here we go. It printed out the same thing. So we have our minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on here. Whoops, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 on here. That's how this is actually read on here. So if we actually print out the pointer, let's do that. Let's just print out the pointer on here so you can see what's going on. Pointer, comma, R pointer. And let's run that. And you can see that the pointer is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it does not include the 5. And it prints out each value. We can do something like this. We can go 4. And you can see it just drops the bottom one off. And we can even do something like this, range 1 to 4, and it drops the top one off. So by changing your iteration loop, you can change the pointer and pull up any of these values in your array. And another really cool thing we can do, we have our array, we can actually do array reverse. So instead of iterating and creating a new array, we now have functionality in our array just lets us reverse all the different values. And then if we go ahead and print the array, let me go ahead and run that. You'll see that the array is now in reverse, 5, 4, 3, 2, minus 1. And let's just do a quick rehash of what we covered. So we went over here, and we're going to go on more. There's three sections to this, or two, another section or two. We imported our array, so make sure you always import it. We set our value, so we created array equals array. We have a type, and then we have the values in that type. And if you print it out, you can see that it's an array, type i, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We can look up the buffer info, so we can actually pull out the actual memory location and then what kind of uh, resources it's using. That's what the 5 represents. And then we came in here, we printed just one value out of it, and we remember that it goes starts with 0, so we have 0, 1, 2, which prints our 3 position there, our number 3. We learned how to iterate through the whole array for i and ARR, or i and our array, and we just printed the i out. And then we did for pointer in range 1 to 4, we started off with range 5, and you can see here where it goes 1, 2, 3, and it printed out the values that correspond with that pointer. And finally, we went ahead and reversed the array. So we have our r.reverse, print r. And then the next step with our array is we want to go ahead and add something onto it. And we do that simply with an append. So here's our append, and we're going to append the value 10. And let's go ahead and print array. And now we have 5, 4, 3, 2, minus 1, 10. So we've added that right onto the end of the array. And we can also, if we're going to append something, we can also remove something. So the simple command is remove. And we're going to remove 2. And then let's go ahead and print that. Print r run. And you'll see here the value 2 is now missing from the array. So it goes through and it finds number 2 in here. And this leads into an interesting question. What happens if we have two values? of the same, or two twos, there we go. We're gonna put in two twos. So let's go ahead, and I'm just gonna copy this down here and recreate our array, and I'm gonna add a second two in here, two comma two, and let's see what happens when we remove the two from there. It removes one of the two, and the way it works is it removes only the first two in the list. So we do the remove value on there. You'd have to write, rerun this a number of times to get all the different twos out. Now, earlier, we did print Here's our R, and we can do position, let's do position 3. We'll just run that, and position 3 happens to point to 4. What if we wanted to do something in reverse, like print R dot index? 
and I'm going to put the 4 in there, and let's see what happens. It prints 3, which was our pointer. So index does the reverse. And if you remember correctly, when we did, um, let me go ahead and do, let's just take this whole array and recreate it again. And I'm going to change the index from the 3 to the 2. 3 is actually going to point to one of the 2s, because we have to see 0, 1, 2. So we're going to do index of 2, and let's run that. We have 0, 1, 2, and I did my argument of 2, which is going to come up as 2. But when I did my index, the index is only 1. Why? Because 0, 1. It's going to look at the first 2 in the array. So when you do your index, remember, if there's multiple 2s in that array, it's only going to look at the first 1. And then we'll go ahead and here, in front we have our array imported. And let's go ahead and create a new array. This one we're just going to make as an empty array. It's going to be the I. We'll stick with that. And it has no values in it. So that's what this means. And if we print it out, just print our array. We say we just have an array with no, there's no values in there, nothing coming through. And so we want to go ahead and do on this array is we're going to create an input. And we'll set a variable x equal to, it has to be an integer, so it's going to restrict it. It's going to be an input. And then from our input, we'll give it, what's the enter size of array. There we go. Enter on this. And then let's do print. What did we do? Let's do it this way. Enter d element x. This is kind of a fun thing we can set up on here. This has to do with print format on here. So let's take a look at this real quick and see what's going on before we do our print. Let me just take the print out there and let's run this. And of course it helps if I match my brackets correctly. There we go. So we're going to enter the size of array. So this is what this is going to generate. The first one generates our input box. And let's just put a 4 in there just to see what that looks like. And we're going to run that. And so at this point we're not getting anything coming out. Make sure I get all my brackets in the right place there and try it again. So we're going to enter the array, 4, I hit the enter key, and it's going to print out, enter 4 elements. So this is a marker in your print statements for formatting. And it just lets us know we're going to take the x value and we're going to put it in there. And then from here, we're going to do for i in range, in this case, x. And this should look familiar from earlier. So we're going to do, if it's in range of x and I enter the number 4 in, it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3. It always starts at 0 on the range. And we're going to do n equals integer input. There we go. And if you look at this, this is just another input statement. Just like we had integer input, enter size of array. Now I have integer input again. We're not going to do, we can actually do, uh, like have it print something out, but we're just going to leave that blank. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And we're going to append that new value to our array. And then let's print it out. Let's print out our array. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like when I run it. Let's create an array of four, since that seems to be fun, and it says enter four elements. So element one, two, three, four. I hit enter, and we print out our array, and we see that I have an array of one, two, three, four. So I can use a user input just like this, a real simple setup, but it allows me to enter the data into the array. And then finally, we're going to remove a duplicate elements from the array. And we're going to do this is first of all, create another array. What we'll do, let's see, we'll keep it as the I, keep it all uniform. It shouldn't make a difference. And uh, if we have, we already have our setup up here. You know what? Let's just keep the array. We already have our array we did. Let's just keep that one. And let's rerun this. And we'll do five elements. And we'll do one, two, two, three, three. And you'll see here we have a nice array of one, two, two, three, three on there. And so we're going to create, this is kind of an interesting setup because we're doing nested loops. And so the logic in these can sometimes get confusing, and they come up more than you think in programming. I and mean, you always got to be careful because when we create multiple loops, you always run into the problem adding more resources. You're like you're running through everything multiple times. And so we're going to start with our while statement, and we're going to start with um, i equals 0, while i is less than x minus 1. Oops, I forgot to put in my x. Oh yeah, we already have the x. So I'm pulling this value of x. This is how many elements are in our array. Okay, so we're just going to reuse that x. That's where this x comes in. And we're going to do wall i is less than x minus 1. We're going to do j equals i plus 1. And there's a lot of ways to do this. So if you come up with another solution, kudos to you. I actually have about four or five different solutions depending on the detail of the project I'm working on. For something simple like this, any one of them will probably work. And uh, we're going to take if our array of i equals, remember to do two equal signs for doing a Boolean function, j. So let's just take a quick 
look at this. We want to make sure that 1, j, and x are not equal. That's where we keep j greater than x because that's the way it should go up incrementally. j equals i plus 1. j should always be greater than x because i is always less than x minus 1. And we're going to go up here and say, hey, if array i equals array j. So we have two loops going on. The first one is our i loop going up and then our j group going up. So as long as j is less than x, we keep going up on the j until we get to x. There we go. We want to just delete it. Delete j. Just removes it right out of the system. And then we want to take x equals x minus 1. Why? Because our x array is now 1 less. This is the length of our x array. So it doesn't make sense to go past the end. You'll get an error. And then we want to go ahead and increment, let's see, go back to, there we go, j plus equals 1. So we're going to add 1 to our j value. And then we're going to go back one more. There we go. Oops, I think I went too far. j, there we go. This j goes here. There we go. And then x is going to equal x minus 1. So our x value is going down in 1. Oops, I had this, eh, that's what I did up here. That's the size of the array going down. Down here is just i plus equals 1. And this is shorthand. You could do i, this is the same as i equals i plus 1. You could do i times equals 1, or i is the same as i times 1. So your basic math functions, you can put them right in here like this. It's just a shorthand, which is really nice. And we're just incrementing our values on here. So you can see what that looks like. Just like this x equals x minus 1, I can also do this. x minus equals 1. We can also change this to a minus 1 and do x plus minus 1 that increments it down one. Those are all equal. So just some quick shorthands makes life a little easier. And finally, let's go ahead and print our array. And let's see what happens here. And voila, uh, if you look at the original array, it was 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. We now have an array of 1, 2, 3. And this is involving two different loops. Again, this is basic array manipulation and basic iteration through your array. There are so many different ways to do this. This is using pointers. That's important to note. So we're not just doing like for i in array. We're doing i as a pointer. And we're incrementing the pointers manually. And there's other ways to do this. I could do a for loop and then have it go backwards from the end of the array and just see if the last value is in the array. And that's another way to do it. So there's all kinds of cool ways to do this. But this is one solution that looks really nice. Generally, be very careful. Whenever you nest arrays, remember you're iterating through the data. For each piece of data, you're iterating through the data. So you're multiplying your iterations. So if I have five pieces of data and none of them are duplicated, that's basically five minus one is four, but it's basically five times four calculations I'm doing, so 20. And you can see if I had a third loop in here, that'd be five times four times three if I was doing another iteration. So that can happen. So be a little careful with these iterations through loops, but you can see here how we went ahead and we were able to manipulate our iterations through the loop to delete each of the values. So let's go ahead and let's uh, go back through this real quick and look at what we did. From the beginning, we did our import, we created our array, we looked at the buffer, so we know where it is in the actual computer. Uh, we looked at looking at one value in the array. We looked at going through an iteration of all the values in the array. We looked at going through range and printing out the pointer in the array. We reversed our array. We then took and appended a value to the array. We removed one of the values in the array. And if you remember below, there's a way to do the removal of multiple values using the same thing. So while two is in the array, you could do a remove two. That's another way to do it. And we had our array here where we did a print index, which looks at the first index or the first pointer in the array. We came down and did an enter and created an array using our interface. And then finally, we deleted all our duplicates out using two separate loops to iterate through the data. That wraps up our basic commands in array. I'd like to thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.